Welcome back to our half-hour highlights of the 12th Festival of Pacific Arts. There's no doubt that this festival showcases our diverse cultural heritage as Pacific Islanders. As the premier cultural event of the region, the Festival of Pacific Arts happens every four years and provides the ideal opportunity for Pacific Islanders to come together to discuss important cultural issues of this part of the world. The Festival of Pacific Arts is the biggest cultural event in the region. It also provides an important platform for dialogue about cultural issues facing the regional and global community. Every four years, the Pacific Ministers for Culture meeting is convened, and this year the Pacific Community, SPC, and the Government of Guam hosted the Third Ministers meeting to coincide with the 12th Festival of Pacific Arts. The purpose of the meetings is for member countries to have a discussion around what would be the key priorities, what would be the key issues that they would want to progress within the next four years ahead of the next festival and the next ministerial meeting. And that all of that, of course, needs to be considered and um, discussed within the context of the regional culture strategy. So. It's important for member countries to have that discussion um, and to decide on what the priorities are moving forward. High on the agenda at the one-day meeting was the midterm review of the Pacific's regional culture strategy based on recommendations put forth by the Council of Pacific Arts and Culture. The 10-year strategy sets the standards to safeguard and promote the region's cultural aspirations by providing policy guidance for the development of the cultural sector and the promotion of Pacific cultures. The main objective of the midterm review is to take stock of what has been done so far, to um, look at whether or not we are going the right direction in terms of the implementation, and if we're not, how can we improve on it and how can we do it better? So things like uh, better integration of culture as a cross-cutting issue across um, uh, different sectors of development is a, is a key one. Um, the need to um, try and explore how we can progress further the implementation of national culture policies um, and other things. One of the things that uh, they highlight, the, the review report highlighted was uh, the targets to be smart. You know, what the plan is called specific and measurable and all those jargon, eh? and that's important because the, the strategic plan is, uh, the strategy is at a regional level. The rate of implementation at sub-regional, Micronesia, Melanesia and Polynesia, and right down to national level would be different, depending on what the priorities are in the countries themselves. Eh? So it's good that it's now midterm review, we can see how the strategy can be sharpened or adjusted were required to ensure that we still get to where it was intended to take the region as a whole. The other one is advocacy. There hasn't been enough publicity and the onus is not only on the cultural officials or in the, in the, the agencies of the national governments that deal specifically with culture, but also with the central plan, planning agencies or the strategic planning agencies to ensure that it was gathering data from the different sectors to make sure that they were all comprehensive in their approach when they're making the holistic strategic plan for the nation, sir. Other key items on the agenda included Hawaii's preparation for the 13th Festival of Pacific Arts in 2020, the 2005 UNESCO Convention on the Protection and Promotion of Cultural Expressions, and linking discussions around Pacific culture to the global agenda. Very often we, the work on culture is done in isolation and that's the challenge. What we need to do is to consider how we integrate and mainstream culture across the various platforms so that we not only get support in terms of resources across the different areas of development, 
but there's also an opportunity right there to raise the profile of culture and to get better understanding and awareness of the contribution of culture and the value of it in the context of sustainable development in the region. When we look through the sustainable development goals, all 17 of them, about 14 or 15 were relevant to culture. So when we're looking at how the countries and the region can align to the sustainable development goals, that's one way to look at it. The other way is that's the best way that countries can mainstream culture into the areas that matter in, in, in terms of national development and therefore global development. Right? So I hope that the recommendations that come out of today's meeting by the ministers are going to be taken back to other countries so that we can examine in which way we can be thinking globally but strategizing regionally and acting nationally. The Festival of Pacific Arts has a proud history spanning 44 years and it will return to where it all began following the endorsement of Fiji's bid to host the event in 2024. We are really looking forward because Fiji is not only the hub of the Pacific, it's a recognized hub of the Pacific. It has to play that role of harnessing everyone's input into the process, particularly in an area as sensitive and as, as uh, specific as culture and arts. It looks like our time is up, but we hope you enjoyed all the stories from today's show. But if you want to know more about the Festival of Pacific Arts, log on to festpack.visitguam.com. Till next time, I'm Josh Takenko, Sidzus Masi, and thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow. What we own, what we have, what we share, united voices of the Pacific. United Voices